The reason I'm here lying on the ground is because in this video I want to share one of my favorite plants with you and um, we are going to make some tea out of it. We're also going to talk about cultivating herbal awareness and I'll share what I mean by herbal awareness but um, I think you're going to find it's a, it's a pretty cool way to engage with plants and to, to grow our awareness of plants. This little plant right here in the dappled sun is called wintergreen. One of the things that always really stands out to me about wintergreen is the um, just like the kind of leathery shiny color of the leaves and um, here we are it is you know very early spring it is you know right at the beginning of April um, nothing is growing yet uh, you know there's just really everything is still very much dormant there's some buds starting to expand um, but there's not really all that much happening and here we have this this green plant that has stayed green all winter and uh, it's a it's a low growing shrub it lives in the forest you know in in uh, it, it does like a fair amount of Sun but likes to hang out in the forest here it is hanging out underneath this little pine tree and one of the you know the really distinctive features about this plant that I always tune into is that if you take a leaf and break it apart a little bit and smell it it has this beautiful minty wintergreen smell and um, because of that this was one of the first plants I ever learned to, to confidently identify and it really is quite easy to identify um, so it's a great one to start with so I thought what we would do today is harvest a bunch of this wintergreen and I'll show you how I make tea with it and then we'll go through a little awareness exercise that you can do with any tea um, to cultivate herbal awareness so even if you don't have wintergreen in your area you'll be able to do the exercise with um, any other type of tea that you want to just build a relationship with one of the things I'm always talking about is cultivating awareness and um, you know when when we get outside to learn about plants to not just harvest the plant eat the plant and then move on um, but to actually harvest that plant with awareness and eat that plant with awareness and actually notice how it has an effect on you and if you start to tune in with um, you know a state of mindfulness in your body um, in your senses while you engage with plants you'll notice that different plants have different effects they have different qualities um, and uh, it's it's kind of interesting stuff to tune into it's stuff that we don't often think about um, you know as we're um, sort of moving through our day but there's so much of what we do with food is just kind of like mindless consumption and um, if you tune in your body can actually tell you some really interesting things so I'm just gonna harvest some of this plant and then we'll head back and we'll make some tea when I harvest I like to just sort of pick from a bunch of different plants you know don't take everything from one plant um, and that way you're not actually killing anything you're just sort of taking a leaf here and taking a leaf there on this location there's so much of it that it wouldn't be that big of an issue to to harvest pretty heavily but it's just good practice to always think about um, the conservation of the plant while you're um, planning to use it and uh, just to make sure that it's always there in the future as well Another thing to note about this plant is that it makes these little red berries and um, the amazing thing is that these berries stay on the plant all winter long and uh, so even in the middle of winter if you find one of these berries you can eat it now always make sure that you know what plant you're dealing with I'm confident that this is wintergreen so um, I'm pretty comfortable picking this berry but isn't that amazing that at the very end of winter even through winter and moving into like the earliest stages of spring 
that we can have these um, these berries. So here we go. I'm going to eat the red winter green berry. And they have this like really amazing minty flavor. The place where I used to live, winter green berries were extremely rare and I almost never found them. But here, they're all over the place. They're just really, they seem, for whatever reason, the soil is different. The soil here is really sandy. Where I was before, it was really a lot of clay. So maybe that's why. Um, but whatever the reason, there's tons of these winter green berries all over the place. And to show you what I mean, there's one with two berries on it. Here we have another one. There's one right there. There's one right there hiding under that hiding under that leaf. And I see one over there too. Yeah, every like two feet at least there's a berry. And for being, you know, such a common wild edible, um, I think very few people have actually heard of wintergreen berries, or at least I know very few people who actually eat winter green berries on a regular basis um, but you know if you're ever in doubt about the identity of the plant you can just um, you can just take the leaves break them a little bit and smell it and the smell is unmistakable um, and so then you you know what you're dealing with it actually ends up being one of the safest wild plants to eat as well because it's so easy to identify one other thing I'll mention is that um, in terms of the the color, uh, a lot of times it, it has this sort of green color, um, but very often you can also find sometimes large patches of it that have more of a purple color like this. And uh, I'm not really sure what the difference is. I tend to make my tea out of the green stuff. Um, for some reason, it just seems the green seems more like the real color to me and so that's the stuff I go with um, but I don't really know what the what the difference is it might have something to do with the amount of sun that they have access to so here we go we got a pretty nice handful here I usually find that it takes more plant material than you would think to make winter green tea uh, the first time I made it it was way too weak um, so you want to gather quite a bit uh, usually like a small handful is pretty good um, but you can you can sort of play with it as you try it out and um, make it multiple times you'll you'll get a better feel for how much you like to use how strong you like to make it so I've got a bunch of leaves here and uh, let's head back and make some tea okay so we are back at the house and I have my winter green leaves here and I'm gonna show you how I make the tea I think there's a number of different ways of actually making the tea. Some of them are more complicated than others. I'm a big fan of simplicity and so I like to just keep it really simple and what I find works best is just to boil some water and um, put the leaves in and let them steep for a really long time like 30-45 minutes and that that gets just a really nice flavor. I also find that um, cutting the leaves into smaller pieces um, just to sort of give access to the inside of the leaves uh, really helps to get the flavors out a lot better. Uh, the first time I did this I just used like whole leaves and I didn't actually cut them up and it didn't work that great so if you cut them up it um, just lets the water get in there a lot better and I think it gets a much better result. Okay, so these are all cut up and the water is warming and uh, we're just gonna pop them in there. So I'm just gonna mix them in with the water and I can already smell the winter green coming off and uh, it smells really good. But we're gonna give this, I'll start with half an hour and we'll see how it looks after that. Okay, so I gave the tea 
uh, just about half an hour on the stove there it was simmering during that time um, and I don't know how well you can see this but the leaves have changed from like that bright green color to more of a brownish sort of color and I think this is ready to go so um, I'm gonna pour out the tea and then we are going to do a little um, sensing exercise with it, a mindfulness exercise to help us feel what are the actual qualities of this tea and how does it affect us. Okay, so I was gonna do this part outside, um, but one of my neighbors is using some heavy machinery and so it's, it's very loud out there. But here we are, I've got my tea um, ready to go. If you want to develop your ability to sense into the qualities of a particular tea that you're drinking and to get an insight into, you know, maybe some of its um, medicinal value or just to just to have more awareness of how a particular tea actually affects you personally and what the benefits of it might be for you personally. Um, you know, first off, always do this with something that, uh, you know, a plant that you, you know what it is, <laughs> that you've confidently identified it and accurately identified it, um, and that you know that it's safe and it's safe for you. Um, there are some plants that have, you know, just really strong properties that might not be appropriate for everyone. Um, and so always, you always want to make sure that you're, you're just, you're, you're doing things safely. Um, but then, you know, if you look at all the different herbal traditions around the world, um, uh, one of the most popular being, uh, and well known being traditional Chinese medicine, they talk about how every plant, every substance has these qualities like hot and cool and, uh, uh, wet and dry and, um, that these, different qualities of the plant is what amounts to the the different kind of effects that um, that they have on us and you know if we think about uh, you know hundreds or thousands of years ago before we really had the kind of understanding that we have today of chemistry uh, the actual qualities of the plant was really what we had to go on um, you know it was just accumulated knowledge and um, and what we can actually sense in the plant so there's there's really there's value in being able to feel what is actually the effect of a plant. And um, the most important thing that I have learned in being able to cultivate that awareness is before you even take your first sip, you want to just sort of start the tuning in process and you want to take a moment to feel what your before state is you know how are you feeling right now before you drink the tea before you take it in even before you smell it um what what are you actually feeling and so this can really be as simple as just doing a, a quick little sense meditation to um, get yourself tuned in and get into the sensations that are moving in your body so for me the way that i do this is i just close my eyes and I just focus on my breathing for a few moments. As you breathe, you can just sort of scan through and, and just relax. You know, it's always easier to feel things if you're relaxed. And so you just sort of tune in and notice where, where, where are you holding any sort of muscular tension and just let all that go. After I do a little tune in on the physical level, then you can also do this more internally, uh, looking at your, uh, you know, how do you, how do you feel in your organs? You know, do you, do you feel like, um, is your heart racing or is it moving at a fairly relaxed pace? How does your digestion feel? Um, you know, if you tune into your stomach, can you still feel the, the meal that you just ate? Is it, is it digesting well or, uh, you know, how is that going? And then the meal that you ate a few hours ago, um, further down in your digestive system, can you actually feel all of that stuff? And it's amazing when we take the time to just sort of tune in with what our body is telling us, the kinds of things that you'll feel. And all of this is important awareness to have if you wanna be able to discern what is the actual effect that a plant is having on you when you drink it in, in a tea. 
But we can even go a step further and um, look at the emotional layer. So what are you experiencing emotionally? Um, you know, are there any feelings moving in your body? Do you feel calm? Do you feel um, agitated? Are you stressed out? Uh, you know, are you, are you happy? Are you sad? What are you, just what are you feeling? Just sort of notice. And it's not, none of this is about trying to change anything. It's not about, um, you know, trying to do anything with it. It's just observing and just being mindful of what's there. Then after we've taken uh, a few moments, you know, the first time you do this, you might want to spend a little bit more time just kind of getting in tune with yourself. But once you've, done, once you've practiced, you can move through it fairly quickly. And uh, really, I do this every time before I drink any tea. Um, it can be just like a little five or 10 second check-in just to notice how you're doing. And so the next thing is we're going to, at least the way I do it, um, I just wanna smell the tea for any kind of sense that you can, you can smell. And it just, you know, it activates your sense of smell. So um, it's gonna, you know, just activate your brain and your nervous system in a way that, um, uh, you know, a lot of people don't really always use their nose all that much. And so it's just good practice to wake up your senses and just sort of notice any qualities that you detect, like some, I'm, I'm detecting some sweetness here. Obviously there's the, uh, the warmth and the humidity of the uh, steam rising off the tea. And you can start to um, sample the tea. And as you do, really put all your focus on just being with the sensation of the tea in your mouth, the taste of the tea, you know, what kind of flavors come through and don't immediately like swallow it down. Um, just sort of let it rest in your mouth. Let it really coat all the areas of your tongue. One thing that I noticed for me, um, and this would be true for a lot of teas, like I don't think it's specific to just this one, um, when I take a drink of this, the, it's the warmth and the um, just feeling it slide down my throat. It's very relaxing and it, it always just makes me want to get this big smile on my face. So if, if nothing else, you know, drinking tea mindfully and really tuning in with what are the, what are the pleasurable sensations that you get uh, when you drink something warm and sweet and uh, delicious, what is the joy that it brings you? And if nothing else, you can just focus on that and, and uh, it'll be a worthwhile experience. As I'm tuning in, I'm just sort of noticing what I feel. This, this plant, wintergreen, tastes very similar to how it smells, uh, which isn't always true for every plant. Sometimes you make a tea and the, um, the, the tea tastes different than what you would expect from having smelled it, but this actually tastes very much like the the way the plant smells. And so we wanna just kinda of tune into what we're feeling as we drink the tea. So we, we started by noticing, taking a snapshot of what do we feel before we drink the tea? Now we're looking at what do we experience while we're drinking the tea? And you can kind of use different spectrums of qualities to sort of think about where does this tea actually lie on different spectrums? So for example, um, like a peppermint tea is a good example of a tea that you might drink hot, but that its quality has sort of like a cooling effect. This one here with the wintergreen tea, if I look at that same spectrum, it doesn't feel quite as cooling as mint. Another thing to pay attention for is the level of wet or dry. And so obviously, you know, it's a liquid, it's wet. Um, but it's more about if you've ever taken something um, like sucked on a lemon or um, something that just kind of made it, made it feel like your mouth was just drying out. Um, some plants have that, that quality of astringency where you, um, even if you're drinking it in, in a tea, it's just got that bitterness and it, it sort of feels like it sucks all the moisture out of your mouth and makes your mouth really dry. Whereas others give you more of like a, a lubrication experience. And you can notice this both in the mouth 
but also in the throat. So if you have like a dry scratchy throat, you would want to take something that gives you more of a, um, a, a wet experience. Since I started drinking this tea, my mouth actually does feel a little bit more dry. So that would kind of uh, move it a little bit more on the dry side of the spectrum. But of course that could also just be me personally. Uh, you know, it could just be that I haven't had enough to drink today. So I think it's important to um, not get too attached to the things that you observe and um, to also, you know, maybe try this out with other people and see what they observe, see what they experience and notice where your observations line up with theirs and also where are they different. Um, and uh, that's where, you know, these herbal systems really come from. It's a, it's a collaborative conversation and dialogue over a period of time, people testing things out and trying things and noticing what they observe and looking for what is the general consensus around things and, um, you know, being able to replicate the results over and over again with a wide variety of people. I will say for me personally, I often have um, digestive issues. Um, that seems to be one of the, one of the weak areas in my body and this feels good in my digestive system you know it uh it definitely is um seems to have a beneficial effect not as significant as something like dandelion um dandelion is just so great for my digestive system this doesn't feel quite as potent as that um, but it's still nice. It, it could be, you know, if I were feeling a little bit of discomfort after eating, this would be a good drink for me to have um, to help smooth that out. There's definitely a sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet. And I wouldn't say I'm really detecting all that much um, of a bitter flavor in it either. Another quality you can look at is whether it's more stimulating or whether it's more calming. And so I would definitely say that this one feels more on the calming side of things. Um, it's just a really nice calming drink. If you like peppermint tea, um, you'll probably like this, but it, it's definitely more mellow than peppermint tea. So I won't go too crazy, you know, uh, analyzing this to death and, and sharing every little thing that I notice here, but I, I really just want to get the point across that anyone can do this and you can do this with any kind of tea. And it's just a matter of making a decision that, hey, when I drink this, I wanna be just a little more mindful than I normally am and see what kind of experience I have. My experience is that um, if you do it repeatedly, like with the same plants over and over again, um, you know, maybe pick just two or three plants that you wanna really focus on. Look at what's available around you, look at what you have growing in your herb garden and do this exercise with them multiple, multiple times, noticing what you experience each time. And um, with repetition, you'll start to get more of a sense of what, what are the actual consistent qualities that you're starting to notice. And do it with other people too, so you can, you can exchange notes and, um, and, and share your experience. At the end, um, what I would encourage you to do is continue to monitor how you feel over the next um, hour or two even after you finish drinking your tea. So we want to look at what are you feeling before and just really take that snapshot of what you're feeling before you drink the tea. Then during the drinking process, we notice certain observations and then at the end, when you're, when you're finished drinking it, you can continue to monitor and notice how you feel over the period of time following that. And that can lead to other insights too. You know, at first you might not be noticing all that much, but then later on you might say, wow, that really did make my digestion go a lot smoother than it normally does. And so um, you can kind of tune into that. It's such a, a simple practice, just a simple little exercise that you can integrate into something as basic as drinking a tea made from plants in the woods. And it can take us to all these um, interesting places and, and we develop our awareness. We're exercising our brain, we're exercising our nervous system, we're opening our senses and we're having a cool connective experience with a plant. And if you do this repeatedly, you'll start to develop a, a relationship with those plants. You'll start to feel like you really know that plant at a deeper level. 
almost like the plant is is communicating with you you know you're you're getting messages from the plant and you're getting to know the character of that plant every plant has a personality a character um, it's got benefits and um, it's got you know things that can be useful for our lives and so the more that we take the time to just tune in with those things and start to understand for ourselves what the effect is for ourselves it's just uh, you know just so much more fun it's just such a a rewarding way to engage with plants i really encourage you to do it and I think that's all I want to say in this video, so I really appreciate you watching. I hope you uh, found this interesting, and I will see you in the next video. It's a woody shoot that comes out of the ground, and it's, you know, basically leafless all the way up the stem until you get to the very top. And then at the very top, there are uh, a series of you know, really alternating leaves at the top. They kind of seem to come out from the same spot, but if you look carefully, it's not, it's not quite the same spot. And then if we look at the individual leaves, we can, we can see this veining pattern where there's, you know, a central vein with these diagonal um, lines coming out and this sort of overall, an, an oval shape to the leaf. Uh, coming to a point at the end and a point a point at the stem